bonjour. Just gonna bring my camera a little bit down here. Sorry, the adjustment wasn't done before. There we go, that's better. Hello. My name is Agathe Mathieu. I'm a living cuisine chef and I'm happy to have you with me here today. Um, I have, how did I come to eat this way? A friend of mine just lent me a book and I trusted that friend dearly. She, she's amazing at what she does. And so I read the book and the next day I started eating this way. And within a week, the arthritis, you know, the inflammation, you can close, you cannot do, clinch your, your fingers like this. <laughs> within a week was gone, within three months, completely they've gone and never came back. And many other things, excess weight, rashes on my face, photos in my vision, just amazing what it did. Um, so here I am. I mean, I love finding out all there is about health, about food. And today, what I did is I um, I was just in a 40 workshop with Tony Robbins called Unleash the Power Within. And one portion of the workshop was on health. Well, as you can imagine, <laughs> it was all the years. I just totally enjoyed that part. I enjoyed everything. It was amazing. But I really 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 enjoyed that part so what is health i mean it's something i've never asked myself it's you know what is it so i look at the dictionary uh, definition and the condition of being sound in body mind and spirit spirit so it's not just our health as in physical health right it's 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 the body the mind and the spirit and especially freedom from physical disease or pain. That's how we see health to be for the majority of us. And a condition in which someone or something is thriving or doing well. Now that's that's something else. It's not just like you're healthy, you're not sick. Healthy as not being sick, but you're thriving. And that's certainly what I'm experiencing with the way I, um, my lifestyle, being the living food and vegan. So what are the most important needs for our body to be healthy? That was a question that was asked by uh, Tony uh, you know, uh, in that part of the workshop. And of course we all said food, <laughs> actually not. <laughs> so there are three essentials that are oxygen, water, and waste. Because if those are not, if we are, well, if we don't have oxygen, we won't last very long, right? And water, I think it's like two days without water. And waste, well, you, can't, you start to intoxicate yourself. So <laughs> you definitely have to have those three things, uh, you know, present in your life. Otherwise, you're just not alive. And then uh, immediately following those is our nervous system that uh, is there to manage all that's going on. And um, and like I said, yeah, you read that right. Food isn't isn't in the top four. It comes after. <laughs> And uh, what it will have to that is the quality of the oxygen and the quality of the water. And that's when we start to say, okay, oxygen, water, waste. So now there is to look at how can I, you know, make myself in an, or provide myself, live in an environment that is as best possible for oxygen quality. The water I drink that is as best possible because that goes in my body. So you need to know what's in your water and then uh, the, uh, the waste. Well, if I don't eliminate, uh, you know, I, I, it, it, it recycles back in the body. So you, you, you're intoxicating yourself. Think of a pond where the water is just not moving. What do you see, right? Um, well, a pond has an has a, has a old uh, microbiome, uh, you know, happening where it, it, it's, it's this way for a reason, but our body is not supposed to be with stagnant stuff inside. Certainly not. So, um, so back to yes, saying about uh, oxygen and water, they are actually test kits that you can buy. You just check online what the rating is. If they, if they say the tests are good or not, but you can buy them online uh, at a hardware store near you. You can also have it, you know, like a more of a lab testing type of thing. I, I'm sure there are companies that will do that for you. And it's especially important when uh, someone is not doing well. Like, you know, it, it's a great thing to do for anybody. Find out what's going on in your home for your oxygen quality, in your water. That's important. But if someone is sick, it's like it would be the first place to look into. And our ways, I mean, I talk about that too, right? It's important. What is an indication of how well our body is doing? Because when we you know, poop, 
because I'm going to use a term. I've seen that in medical news today. I'm going like, oh my gosh, I'm using poop. <laughs> it seemed to be, but eh, people relate to that. Uh, you know what I'm talking about. So um, it, it indicates how well your body is doing. So look before you flush, have a look what it's like. And then that tells you how you're doing. And I have a chart lower down to that, uh, the Bristol uh, chart. And uh, so that will help you. Bristol bowel chart, I think. And I'll tell you later. So that helps you to figure, well, how am I doing? So from the Center for, for Family Medicine online, what did I find about oxygen? Well, oxygen is breath. So everything else spared with oxygen, life is not possible. Oxygen is inhaled into the lungs and then dispersed throughout the body, red cell, by the red cells, the red blood cells. Oxygen gives energy to cells by burning through the sugar and fatty acids that are consumed. And the same red blood cells that carry oxygen through the body also carry carbon dioxide out of the body. Exhaling also remove carbon dioxide from the body. Now, if I say that, what comes to mind for you? With the, you know, since the pandemic and the imposition of the masks, wear the mask when you absolutely must. But if not, you know, it's like you're alone in your car, you're taking a walk in the fresh air, take it off. Because it, it, when we exhale, we exhale the carbon dioxide that we should not have in the body. So take it off. Um, now, like I said, the question to ask yourself, what is the quality of the air that, that I breathe? And um, OK, I'm looking at the time. When you see me looking down there, it's because I'm looking at the time. I have to stay within that half hour. As mentioned above, test the air quality in your home. And so that's from the government of Canada. I'm in Canada. You can check in your area, uh, part of the world that you live in. But home, what might be the source of pollutant in your home? Smoking, attached garage, because you can think, right? If it's not insulated properly, it, the fumes just come in. Uh, cooking, I didn't know that cooking could be a source of pollutant, but uh, well, I guess, yeah, that's what they say. It's like if, when you, when you uh, is it called sear? When you cook and it starts to burn a little, that's a pollutant uh, for your body as well. It's best not to do that. Um, mold, um, renovation and home improvement. They said about heating too. So you have to check if your filtering system, you know, when you have a, heat, a system to heat your home, check the filters, clean those filters. Household items and furniture. So some of them, uh, there are fumes coming out of them. You know, it's, it's, it's hard. I mean, it's hard. It's like, what do I do? I buy a sofa. What do I do? I leave it out to, to for, for a few days so I don't bring the fumes inside. I know it's not easy, but there you go. I mean, you know, be, be aware of it. Uh, house cleaning and laundry product. There is also the paint. And they are paint now that are VC free. So uh, vapor, something free. Um, so you can use those. Just be aware and, and research before bringing something in your home. And to improve the indoor air quality, ventilation can improve, of course. So if you can have a cross draft, and, and again, it depends what's around you. I mean, if you have a cross draft of, like I used to have, uh, my condo was just in line with a, um, where they do repair boats, like huge boats, like, like that, like huge, huge, huge boats. <laughs> and they would work on them and, you know, repaint or take the rust or fix or whatever, solder. And, and the smell, I mean, it was just so I moved out of there. Um, so yeah, so bring fresh air, fresh air in your home if the air is fresh, that is. And uh, so as they say, ventilation describes the movement of hair into and out of the home. So that's why you need the cross draft. Um, that's why also like when you sleep at night, ideally you don't sleep with your bedroom door shut especially for children if you i understand if you put them to sleep with the door shut but after that please open the door crack the window open so they need some fresh air while they sleep you need some fresh air while you sleep and test for carbon monoxide because that's you won't detect it that's not something that is seen smell uh taste you don't so so have 
and they all uh, again um it's it's something you install like a fire alarm and then you can tell you if that comes on tests for mold and chemicals and i guess the, those those tests have been not found in a uh, hardware store i saw that online but do a research as to which one is best and the best way um what does it say here? Sorry. To improve your indoor air quality or to address sources of indoor air pollution and improve your home's ventilation. So yeah, so you, you know, you check around what, what's around you, what might not be good to come in into your home and how you can address that. Um, I wish that you don't have to sell your property like I had to and move somewhere else. Uh, the benefit of good ventilation, it reduces the amount of indoor air pollutant which is trapped there, it's even worse, and helps to limit the buildup of indoor moisture, which can contribute to more growth. So when you keep your, your place closed, like no air circulation, mold can start to grow. And it removes the stale air uh, and increases the amount of uh, outdoor air that comes indoor, which is better. So you can imagine like when people work in building and it's only the ventilation, hopefully they have again, clean filters because that's all they breathe all day and our children in schools. So nature, that's the best place to be. Find out places near the area where you live to breathe fresh air daily. Walk in the park. I mean, the, the park, you know, usually there are quite a few. If you don't have trees, like a, a, a forest of some sort, or a, a good clump of trees of some sort. And when you are there, you know, stay near the trees, up the trees also, it's amazing. It's so grounding, it's wonderful. And near a river, a lake, an estuary, an ocean, that's, that's just, that's the absolute best. Often the cleanest air is found at the coast. Coastal areas benefit from sea winds that bring fresh air in from the ocean this air is generally very low in pollutants and contaminants. It also contains beneficial salt that can help you, you to feel revitalized and reju rejuvenated. And, and, and you know what I'm saying is consider vacationing in areas surrounded by nature. So go in nature when you go vacationing, maybe more than rather than the city or you do a trip in the city and back in nature. That would give you give a give a vacation to your lungs as well. Um, next is water, and again, it's from the Center for Family Medicine. That's where I have the information. Most of it, I have some more, but I'll tell you as I go. So, water is more than a thirst quencher. Almost almost every system in the body is dependent on water in some shape or form. The human body is approximately sixty percent water. It varies, right? Some places this is 70%. I mean, it varies, but there's a lot of water in our body. Uh, water regulates body temperature and helps the liver and kidneys to flush out toxins. So you need you need to have clean water going in to, to wash off. <laughs> um, water lubricates joints and moisturizes the eyes, nose, and mouth. Even oxygen and nutrients are carried to the cell by water. So without water, the body cannot function. Breathing, sweating, and even going to the bathroom are always a person loses water. So, we, so that's why it's so important to drink water. To maintain a healthy body, people need to replenish water levels and continue drinking water throughout the day. So you just don't drink and then not at all for the rest of the day. And the standard recommendation to drink all, uh, is to drink half your body weight in ounces. So for example, a person that is 120 pounds, you drink 60 ounces of water. And uh, I recommend first thing in the morning, <clears throat> drink eight to 16 ounces of water, uh, add cold pressed juices in it, cold press really, don't buy the, from the store. It's, it's pasteurized, it's not the same. You, you don't have the nutrients in it. Your water could be lukewarm too. So there with the lemon, keep it at less than 110 to keep the nutrients intact. 115 is the maximum. They say 118, but I do 110, so say it that way. And I suggest to fill up glass containers of the quantity of water you must drink in a day and keep those in full view so you don't forget. Um, if you add lemon, you can even have them like, you know, at your desk, let's say, and another place in the home where uh, in the kitchen because you go for a meal, have them with the lid so that when you, before you drink, you can you can swell the water in, in, the, in the bottle as in nature is. I mean, nature water keeps moving, right? 
So I won't give you the detail why, but it's important to do that. There's something that happened in the water that is necessary to, well, ideal to have. Otherwise, it, it's like it it's kind of sits at the bottom, the good stuff. <laughs> so shake it around. Um, so question to ask yourself, as we were saying earlier, is what the quality of the water I drink? And as mentioned above, test your water. There are test kits available. Tap water. So th there is something really to know. Tap water contains contaminants that are detrimental to human health, including chlorine and fluoride. It mostly does, unless you have your own well, and then you know you can do what you want, but then also have your water tested because it comes from the ground. So what's in the ground near you, uh, cross fingers and toes that it's clean, so you're clean. Tap water in certain cities is recycled water. Recycle wastewater. Oh my gosh, that's scary. Do not store or drink out of a plastic bottle. Um, I know they market BPA free, but a glass container is much safer. It's safe, period. Uh, plus, bottled water might be processed with ultraviolet light and ozone gas for shelf stability and shipper transport. You see, when they take a product and it has to be transported, sit in the shelf, sit in a warehouse, you know, and all those steps, they do think to the product, so it 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 keeps. But what do they do? Do do you want to put that in your body? Maybe not. And so what it does actually it destroys healthy microbes and probiotics, which our bodies are bi biologically adapt to thrive from. We need that. Water was made in nature in a certain way for a reason. So if it's transformed, it's not the same anymore. And, and glass can truly be clean and sanitized. I can say the same of plastic. Have you ever had the experience of cleaning a plastic container only to find out after multiple wash it still smells. What's going on? Well, the smell might be bacteria that have developed in the tiny scratches and cracks of the container because the plastic does break down. Glass takes way longer. And plus glass is a clear container. So you can see if there is a crack, right? Um, but the plastic is not as evident. So use a container you can clearly see through. You can see if the container is squeaky clean. Also, make sure to scrub the opening where your mouth gets in uh, contact with the bottle because you drink. So you might have itching something and then you drink. So you just still some food on your lips and then it goes on the on the opening of the bottle. The bottle sits next to you for X amount of hours. Well, you know the, the rest of the story. It starts to grow some stuff on it. So you don't want that. Uh, same with the lemon juice. I didn't mention that. But when you put lemon juice in your water, two hours max at room temperature, because otherwise, there you go. I mean, it just starts to develop some, some little creatures in there. And spring water, oh my gosh, as a child, as a child, my grandmother had a farm and there was a spring on the property. I was there, I would just go out there as much as I could. I mean, winter wasn't as easy because the water wasn't running as much and there was snow to get there. But in this, I would just be there. Oh, the, 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 the taste, it's just remarkable. If you have a chance to really have like spring water in a sense, not, not water, spring water in a bottle, spring water out of a spring. That's what I'm talking about here. So uh, good spring water comes from aquifer deep underground. The power of spring water is that it goes through the earth. And let me just see, I move my page, goes through the earth's natural uh, filtration system. Sometimes this means moving up through hundreds of thousands of feet of filtration material. It's hard to believe that a few feet in the water machine could be better than that. You know, like when they filter. It's, it's not like when the nature filters. Spring water is also abundant in healthy minerals and such as silica, magnesium, and calcium, and contains healthy microbes and probiotic. However, some, spring, uh, some springs are unfortunately contaminated due to uh, things like fracking. So it's vitally important to make sure to test the spring water before drinking from it. Just like your tap water, same thing. No different from testing the, the, the water that comes out of your tap. So you be the guardian of your body. Uh, this is from Find the Spring. That's where this information came from, from the spring water. Now waste, and as I was mentioning earlier, uh, it's it's in Tony's uh, workshop that I, you know, like what not food <laughs> that I discover those three important things, which are the oxygen, the water, and now I'm going to talk about the waste. 
And uh, so if you go on Tony's website, tonyrobbins.com backslash health dash vitality, you'll find lots of great information there, lots and lots. It's, it's, it's fantastic. Uh, the quality of our elimination equals the quality of our energy level. So you don't eliminate, as I said earlier, toxicity recycle in the body and then uh, well, it's supposed to be eliminated. So if it's back in the body, then you've got toxins, right? So when the body waste is stuck inside of, of uh, our internal systems, it can cause problems by releasing toxin back into our body. Eight signs of uh, that uh, our emulation system needs help. Uh, it's interesting. So it's it, because it's it's visual, so you can really see. Well, there's some not, but most are, uh, or or you feel it, you you sense it. So your eyes are not clear, and they kind of yellowish or red. You eat uh, sugar or white flour, and or drink a lot of caffeine and alcohol. That wouldn't be good. You feel lethargic and constantly fatigue. You experience brain fog. You crave a better quality of sleep. You have bad breath regardless of how much you care for your dental hygiene, you experience constipation, of course, there you go, and you have acne and skin problems because our skin is, you know, it's, it's one that is the biggest organ on our body. So when something is on your skin, something isn't going, doing right inside. You got to check that. Um, how many bowel movement a day? So I, I looked at quite a few places and, and that too, I was surprised because I always heard like, you know, you have to be daily regular. They say three times a day to a maximum, a minimum, minimum of three times a week. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, only three times a week. Oh, <laughs> but you know, it, it says that in quite a few uh, websites. So I'm saying it's to you as well. Like, you know, medical website and whatnot. That's, they say also the same thing, which surprises me, but that's what they say. So here we go. So the medical news today says, the fluid intake, the large intestine absorb excess water. So no, not drinking enough fluids can harden the poop and make it more difficult to go because the large intestine absorb excess water. The age, aging causes the, it's funny they say it. So it means that the large intestine absorb a lot of water, I guess it should say, not excess water, because then it means that you have too much in the body. So you don't have too much because then you have a hard time to poop. <laughs> so it's the other way around. It, it absorbs a lot of water. Aging. Aging causes the gut to slow down. And so poop does not pass through as quickly. Also, an older person is more likely to be taking medication that may interfere with their usual pooping habits. Yeah, medication can do that. Careful, if you can stay away from pharmaceutical, you're better shape. Actually, activity, sorry. Staying active helps the colon work and move better through the intestine. More efficiently, going for a walk or run can help get things moving more regularly. So yeah, if you drink enough water and you, you, you walk and say so you move, then it's going to help to move the log down the river. <laughs> and so does fiber as well. Here it says too that the diet. So what the person eats plays a significant role in how often they go to the bathroom. And fiber is an essential substance for healthy bowel movement. So since I'm on this uh, living cuisine lifestyle, I, I do go my three times a day. <laughs> I that's why I can't understand a minimum of three times a week. It seems like, oh my gosh. But I, yeah, I do. I eat a lot of fiber. So now there is a, a, something to be aware of as well. So social factors, which is that some people have difficulty pooping in a public bathroom at work or when other people are nearby. So like, you know, I guess if you're in a stall and you hear next door, that, that bothers you. Uh, this can cause someone to hold it longer than necessary. And over time, the body is not able to respond as quickly to sign that it needs to poop which can cause someone to feel constipated and uncomfortable. So, you know, ideally you don't have this situation going. And uh, now the Bristol's tool chart I was telling you about. So, um, and it says, before I go into showing you the chart, it says that poop habits are very personal and they can vary dramatically from person to person, no kidding. Generally speaking though, most people poop between three times a week. It says that again, I was just blown away. Uh, and, and three times a day. 
but it's also important to be aware of the consistency and the regularity. So it's another key to look into. So I'm just gonna put my chart here in position and um, I will share I will share the document so you can see. There you go. There. Uh, maybe I should do this so you don't see what's at the back. There you are. So you see they, they all the, the, the different types that they that they know of or I've seen. So the, the first two, which is hard lump, hard to pass. We don't want that. Sausage shape, but lumpy. Don't want that. Like a sausage, now it's getting better. You see, there's a little crown. Uh, it's like a sausage. It, it's cracked on the surface. So it's, it's better. Sausage is snake smooth and soft. That's the best. And, look, and it looks like a banana. It's true. Well, it's not as big as a banana for me anyway. <laughs> I'm sharing my personal stuff here, but uh, it, it looks like a, a banana and as it would have a similar texture as a ripe banana. Um, and then soft blobs with clear cut edge pass easily. Again, that's not ideal. Fluffy pieces like they float and all that, that's not ideal. And of course we know when it's watery and it's like uh, diarrhea, oh, that's not ideal. So there you go. Now there's something else. So you, you just go online and do Bristol stool chart and you'll find that, I'm sure. Now, the other thing they were showing, and that's brilliant, there is a chart, actually, you can print that one, and then you can indicate, because you might not remember, you know, depending on your personality, you might go, oh my gosh, it's been so many days, blah, 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 no bowel movement, or they were not formed properly, or, and you start to worry about things. So print that chart, just put an X when you go in the day, you know, they say day one, two, three, four, five. I mean, it can be Monday, Tuesday. I guess that might be easier than the one, two, three, four. Five. Anyway, you make it the way it works for you. And then, yeah, indicate, you know, what's going on with your poop. So then you can, tr you keep track of it. So that's a great idea for that. Okay, so I'll, now I'll stop sharing. I'll come back to my, um, there you go. My, 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 the rest of my presentation here, whoopsies. Things are moving right, left, and center. Oh, come on, I got, I need this one. There we go. <laughs> I have all those wonderful notes that I want you to know about because they're so important. The nervous system. Oh my gosh, and it's 1127. So the nervous system, I'm just gonna finish with that, uh, is the body's common center. The nervous system collects uh, data, process data, and respond accordingly. Of course, as you know, I mean, otherwise you, you, your body, who is, who is orchestrating all of that? It's your nervous system. So, um, and it's uh, the message tells the heart to beat, the lungs to breathe, the limbs to move, the nervous system even tells the brain how to think. Woo. That too, I didn't know, something to, to look at that. So very important that of course, our nervous system works perfectly because otherwise we're in trouble. Okay, so now I have a few minutes. I have to jump on that right away. I'm gonna, sh I will share my, uh, my screen here again. This is my website. I invite you to go and check it out. I'm just gonna move this at the top here. And then you'll see uh, what I teach and you see how gorgeous it is to eat. So really, you know, this vegan lifestyle is absolutely awesome, delicious. It will work for your entire family. I teach and, and oh, I will show you this. See at the bottom here, you have all the courses, but you have a free, there's a free ganache cake. So in doing this, first of all, it's absolutely to live for, but also you'll see my, my teaching style. So you can see if you enjoy that or not. I teach using grams. I'm not going to use cups. Don't ask me for cups. I won't because if I use grams, you don't have to figure. You don't have to think, oh my gosh, what, what is it? Is it, uh, you know, uh, I pick up a date. What's that? Is it packed? Is it cut? Is it, uh, it's weight. It's so easy and so quick. You'll see when you do the cake. It's super easy. And here you can leave me a message or you can go right here. And also here is, there you go. You can send me an email my Facebook, my Instagram, uh, YouTube has a lot of videos that you can look into. And then here, uh, they just didn't have, but it's the win-win woman uh, link to go to it. So there you are, That's, this is my presentation today. And uh, like I said, I was just you know thrilled to bits to be in that workshop and hear everything they had to say, which I didn't think of. Like I said, no, well, we need food. No, we need those things before we need food. So again, 
a healthy woman, a healthy man who has a, has a thousand dreams. We do, right? When you're healthy, it's like, hey, there's no limit. You can go with friends, you can go on hikes, you can do this, you can take vacation, you can, you can, you can, you can take, you know, enjoy your life. But if I'm healthy, you only have one. And the answer is on your plate. It's those hands here that brings that food to your mouth. So <laughs> you, you're the director of those hands, aren't you? <laughs> so make sure. And on my website, I didn't see, but I didn't tell you, but there is an ebook and you have wonderful recipes there that are super healthy for you. I wish you health and vitality for you and yours. And I will see you again next week. Have a fabulous week.